Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Saturday, May 21st, 2022, left at 3 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow, we're going to be having a PAO interview. I've done several of them, and uh, it's Colleen Marshall and Miles, and that's the Sheldon Nidal. And um, you can go to paoweb.com if you want to get and listen uh, to that webinar. It's tomorrow, Sunday, at 3.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Well, yeah, you register. I think most of you know that. Something to think about is that do you know how many possible circumstances that could have gone wrong yet didn't in order for you to be alive in this moment. Possible circumstances, trillions and trillions. Everything about you is truly miraculous from the beating of your heart to the light shining through your eyes. Every dimension of your being is perfect and I. All of us are amazing in every way because we are the light of God itself. Know this deep within and let yourself feel that the universe is rejoicing big time in the name of today. Something that we don't really give a lot of time to. A lot of people want to know how they can access their God consciousness, Christ consciousness. Let us be silent lest we may hear the whispers of God. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Let us be silent lest we may hear the whispers of God. The great master, Jesus once said, the kingdom of God is within you, is within each and every one of us. He was inferring that everybody has this innate connection to the great inner kingdom, not just a sacred few. The Christ consciousness in the, is this kingdom, and it is effortlessly and instantly found by anyone who surrenders to it. We are all in the state of consciousness right now. Yet, we may not feel it because the mind is blocking the way. Only when the mind becomes completely relaxed and trusting of life can it be fully revealed. When we fall naturally into the deepest stillness, we will discover this awesome enlightening consciousness is already there. The Christ consciousness is the highest state of consciousness that there is. There is nothing more loving, accepting, insightful, appreciative, and jovial than this enlightened state of mind. Believe it or not, this is our most natural state. When we choose to be at peace with ourselves over everything else in this universe, we naturally begin to connect with this deeply profound spiritual healing energy that resides at the core of our being. We constantly overlook these higher states of consciousness because the mind is so preoccupied and clinging to its extensive variety of desires, thoughts, and fears. The mind basically becomes so busy that it forgets that a more enlightened experience of this life is available to explore in each new moment. Many of us were all taught as children how powerful and important the mind is. And so we blindly follow the mind. We tag along, remain extremely close to it, and believe in it wherever it goes. Unknowingly, we waddle along from one thought to the next, grasping on to every dip and wiggle like we are the chick and it's the great mama duck. 
you may find that weeks, months, and years can pass, pass by, where we are consistently following the mind for 24 hours a day. We may even believe that we have no other choice than to hang on the tail of the mind and be pulled along with its desires forever. The mind's hypnotic spell over us is deep and yet extremely tantalizing, as we may feel lost without it, and are often happily caught in its habit of reacting into this delicious world of desires. Sometimes it happens in a rare moment or situation in this life. We suddenly stop following the mind. A deep relaxation occurs and we realize that we do not have to follow our thoughts at all. We eventually understand that our desires will manifest for us at the right time. And so we can simply bask and enjoy the expansive glory of the great universe around us. It is from this mind-stopping space that a deeper inquiry arises within to find where is the source of this mind. When we peer inside to see where our thoughts are originating from, it causes the mind to become very clear. It is this silence which unlocks the door to finding our connection with the Christ consciousness within. The greatest magical moments of our lives manifest the moment we step back from our desiring, seeking, searching, and needy mind. When we rest into the stillness at the center of our heart, the mind must let go. Life instantly becomes a serene, perfect, and naturally centered experience. We feel that that there is an eternity ahead of us in this healing space. We stop trying to create, achieve, or change anything in this world. It's resting here with existence, revealing our natural divinity while appreciating and accepting the entire universe as it is. It is in the merging of a quiet, trusting, deepest relaxation in the body where the Christ consciousness abides. Discovering this place inside you will heal many layers and lifetimes of doubt, worry, and fear. The enlightened state enters us automatically when the mind truly stops, and when the mind stops, our consciousness expands, and we enter that state. When the mind stops, our consciousness expands, and we enter that state. This happens simultaneously, as if they were two sides of the same coin. The very moment we become completely relaxed and at peace with everything in this life, this highest consciousness must move into us and act through us. It has no other choice. I am a human being, just like you, but at the same time, I am God. Jesus said that, taken from the Gospel of St. Thomas. I am a human being, just like you, but at the same time, I am God. Another enlightening tip to reveal the Christ consciousness takes a little creative exploration and personal commitment. Because this amazing enlightened state is so precious, powerful, and transforming. It resides in the place we would least expect it to be. Our Christ consciousness is not discovered through pushing to find the highest experiences or attempting to resist or avoid the lower experiences. It's not found from trying to only think positive thoughts, nor rejecting those fearful parts of yourself that are not so positive about life. The Christ consciousness 
is much bigger than the mind and is something that finds you when you naturally are at peace with both extremes. When you are walking the middle path of this life, that place which is free from any clinging to the higher and resisting the lower, and the freedom energy, there is no struggle to change anything in this life on the middle road. We see that our consciousness is completely perfect. And it knows everything is perfect as it is. There is this feeling of extreme peace. We know we have already arrived at the great kingdom. So it's not trying to get anywhere special. The best part, however, is that the mind becomes crystal clear and is no longer running the show. We become liberated from the demanding, striving, obsessive ego and realize how wonderful it is to relax and enjoy the simple experience of being alive. Only through finding this middle way in every action, thought, and situation we are in, we can transcend our clinging mind, surrender to source, and discover an effortless freedom from our relentless egos. On the path of surrender, our highest consciousness becomes infused in everything that we do. Because the mind is no longer pushing towards what it wants, nor trying to get away from what it doesn't want. We can actually relax in the experience of now. We suddenly find it very easy to let go of those typical issues which normally irritate and worry us because we are so enthralled in amazing natural expanse of the divine universe flowing all around us. You can lose only what you cling on to. You can lose only what you cling on to, Buddha. He was right. It's important to know that the society around us has hypnotized everyone to believe it is quite normal to live in states of desire, struggle, and suffering. We need this and have to buy that in order to be happy. And without it, you cannot relax and just be content with life as it is. Humanity has gotten used to being needy, and this causes loads of suffering. The habit of resting and relaxing in stillness, acceptance of life as it is, is is, is so cosmic, empowering, and transformative, you'll never go back to striving for anything again. Be patient with yourself, as this suffering habit is accepted by everyone. The entire society are like children who have been given one pair of shoes to wear at birth, and years later they are five sizes too small. We've all been wearing these tiny shoes for so many years that we have just accepted the experience that life typically is small, tight, and confined. Some in many styles and forms such as the plethora of rules, regulations, laws, and moral superstructure of an overly controlled, untrusting society. We're all wearing tight, tiny, little wooden shoes and don't know how to take them off. We have shrunken ourselves to fit into that this is who we are. We, we, We don't so easily accept that the Christ consciousness is our basic nature and our soul's natural destiny. Everyone is blindly following around the ego-driven mind, and so we should do what is normal. Otherwise, we won't fit in and find happiness. What everyone really should be doing, first thing every morning, is break free from this mass societal hypnosis and realize the Christ consciousness is our very nature. When we stop running to catch up with the other rats and sit and realize that finding an enlightened way of 
seeing this life is the most important thing we can do with our time. We start living a new life that is constantly bubbling up joy, creativity, love, and energy within us. After a few days of this, you'll find suffering has stopped showing up on your radar. So I invite you to explore what it's like to feel these tiny hues. If you continue tolerating and ignoring them, it's like tossing a fat bucket of mud splattered all over our windshield and learning how to just deal with it. Do you honestly think we should continue trying to see the road ahead through that little half clear spot on the bottom corner of our windshields and keep driving even faster? The ego is too stubborn and addicted to old habits and would never think to pull over, stop the car, get out and completely wash the entire thing off. Pay attention to the stillness, the silence more often, and there will come a day when you will experience the ego is not really running this show. The inner silence is what enlightenment is all about, washing everything off, cleaning yourself from the mind muck and incessant chatter that constantly squeezing you and compressing your life. When you're with people, don't try to fit into the smaller pair of shoes so others feel more comfortable with the bigger ones, society will never be satisfied with who you truly are. It's just not comfortable allowing everyone's Christ consciousness to move freely about. Until everyone becomes this awakened being, then there will be absolute trust of the individual and no need for controlling rules and regulations. You stand at the edge, ready to throw yourself in. What a shock to discover there is nowhere to go and no one to throw. Round two. You stand yourself in. What a shock to discover there is nowhere to go and no one to throw. I'm not saying that our society is totally wrong. It's just asleep. It doesn't want to recognize the Christ consciousness in every being. It thrives off of suffering, and the government would go out of business if we all awakened to our sovereign state connecting with our enlightened consciousness inside. It will take everything we've got inside ourselves to stand up, be strong, and liberate ourselves from the mass hypnosis. When the Christ consciousness is awake, awakened within you, you will know. You will feel unstoppable in everything you do and totally trust that wherever life decides to take you, it's always guiding you home. What I want more than anything is that every one of us learn how to trust ourselves. If you've been driving for years with a massive mud cake on the windshield of your mind, a deep cleaning and brainwashing may be needed. Start with affirming to yourself that you can trust yourself every day in every way. Feel what trusting your heart is like. How does it resonate inside? Realize that remaining at 100% trust is the enlightened state that knows everything is perfect as it is. Meditate on this thought. Meditate on it for the next 90 days and notice how your body, mind, and life tend to respond. Now, if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I'm sure that we all are. And the first thing that we care to do is relax, absolutely paramount. Because we're not these bodies. We're in them. We're the God source within them. We're not the name. We're not the character. We're not the personality. We're not our status in this life. So 
to relax in these bodies that we're in. And people, I, I think people get the idea that, you know, we we we, this, we believe we can't we can't keep our bodies relaxed. Well, that's just temporary. How do you keep your body relaxed all the time? And we can. In fact, you can keep your body in a relaxed state where you it, it becomes so natural that you would not know anything else. So think about that. Feel about that. That through your breath is how you relax the body. Everybody has tried all different kinds of synthetic ways to relax themselves. Have you ever experienced a relaxation where maybe in different ways, I'll just use one example, like a, um, a hammock on a summer afternoon, and you're lying in the hammock on your back. And you thought you'd go there to read a book or just kind of chill out for a bit. And you find yourself moving into a silence. And your ears, you know, you, you less and less noise. You might hear a mower or dog barking or the leaves fluttering under the wind. But it's you can hear it, but it's it seems so far away. It's kind of a real soft sound. And you're not sleeping, but you're not awake. And you're in between. And you you literally have no motivation to move your body. Zero. You're not even, it, it isn't even there. And also, you don't have any mind chatter. And you're not thinking. You're just being. That's kind of like how we can be whenever we choose through meditation. And by doing it through the breath, we have such a powerful energy through the breath. The breath is created through the God that we are that enter this body and helps power the body. And so it's magical. You, we've all experienced, you know, someone gets excited or something, or a child gets um, excited, you know, upset. And we say, just take a couple of deep breaths, easy and slowly, uh, and calm down. And this seems to work quite a bit with uh, many people when they get distraught. The breath is really powerful. It gives us strength, power, relaxation, focus, ease, de-stressing. So when we focus on our breath, what ex exactly what happens is we take easy and slow breaths through the nose in, and easy and slow breaths out through the mouth. And as we do this, the body lets go. And I learned years ago that men and women carry their stress. You would think that it would disappear, right? A lot of people think, well, I had a stressful day. Right? You ever said that to yourself? Oh, this day's been really stressful. You carry it. You don't. It doesn't. It doesn't leave you. You carry it in the body, kind of a residual. And the body is like this super magnetic sponge, and we don't really think about that, say. And so, it just depends on the person, uh, on uh, on where they they hold their stress. Could be anywhere. After years and years and years of building that stress and, and, and absorbing it into the body, then what happens is, is that biologically things wear out quicker because of that continued stress. So through meditation and through this breath, breathing that we do, it really helps the body. It releases a lot of the stress, anxiety, and fear that we carry with us and store in our organic tissue within the body. 
So when we do the breath, we still the ego mind, subconscious mind. And what I mean by stilling is that we don't engage them. We walk, we, we leave them alone. Engage them, we don't interact with them. And by doing this, you're moving yourself into the now. And see, that's where the ego, see, the ego mind knows that it doesn't exist in them. So this is why it tries so very hard to keep us all in the past or the, or the future. Future, past, past, future, future, past, past, future. That's how it works. And it does pretty good, darn, it gets a darn good job of it because the majority of people on this planet are either in the past or the future, not the now. But the breath will always bring you into the now, listening to the breath, focused on the breath. And everything in the now, that's where everything happens anyway. That's where we build our futures in the now. The past is in the now. Everything's there in the now. And, and so if someone were to ask you, Alice, what are you, what are you doing tomorrow? You wouldn't know how, you couldn't answer that because you wouldn't know what you're going to do tomorrow. And that goes against everything that this, this civilization has been taught. Doesn't it? Doesn't it go against everything we've been taught? No, you got to plan. You got to you got to set goals. You got to have structure. You got to do all this stuff. And and th- this is wrong in many different ways. We believe that we have to go out there and work our fingers to the bone and scratch and crawl and struggle and fear and worry. And, and just literally rack ourselves out to get somewhere, to be somewhere, to be someone. But in the now, the mind chatter is gone. We all have that mind chatter 24-7. We don't. We're not thinking. We're not in the head. We're in the heart. And we relax. And we go with the flow. You see, it's real important to visualize. It's why I use the boat analogy so much. It's this representation. When when you get in that boat on the river, and you have a choice, right? You either can get on the boats that are just gripping and red faces and soaked, fighting the current going upstream, Or you can go downstream, let the current take you wherever it takes you. That's going with the flow. It's downstream thinking. And, you know, some people go, well, how you can't, you how can you go, how can you go with the flow? You can't go with the flow. That's crazy. You've got to have structure and planning and organization. You've got to have all of this stuff or you'll fail. This is what we've been taught. What a stressful, unnecessary habit. All of the possibilities are in the unknown. And the unknown is in that boat, floating down river, letting that current take you. You have no idea where it's going to take you. That's the unknown. And that's what we fear. Isn't that amazing? All the possibilities are in the unknown, and we fear the unknown. Because the ego mind starts saying, what if it doesn't work? What if you hit a rock? What if the current takes you in a rock and it smashes the boat and you drown? All of these negatives come in, say, fear, fear, fear. And then some people that are, you know, going with the flow, they'll just take the boat, put it over to the They'll just steer it into the shore and then get out. You know, I can't do this. And then they look at all of the grimacing faces fighting the current upstream. Well, I sure as heck I'm not going to do that.
So you look in that body that you're in, you'll see seven lights, balls of light, and they're all different colors. They're very vibrant, brilliant, beautiful colors that not more than you'd see on this planet. And they're called chakras. The definition of chakra is wheel. These are wheels of life. They're spirit etheric energy. They're connected to all the organs, all the blood flow, all the emotions, all the personality, all the character, everything. We, the gods within the body, flow. We are spirit etheric energy, omnipotently powerful. So doesn't it make sense that through discovery within ourselves, going within, the journey within to discover that we are the God, that we would eventually discover the fact that we could heal these bodies at a blink of the eye? Knowing that is halfway there. Knowing it is halfway there. Now, you can visualize yourself in the body, because you are in the body, and you have this brilliant light, and it gives off an aura. So when people, when you have the right equipment and you look at the body, you will see that the body appears to glow. And that energy comes from the God force love light energy within each and every one of us, the gods that we are. So there's about, on and above and below this planet, there's about 8 billion humanoid and bodies, right, with gods inhabiting them. Then you have all the other forms on this planet with gods inhabiting those forms to experience those forms. And we're consciously aware. And what does that mean? means that we know, we know, we know that we are of and from the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, and purest of the purest, purest, purest eternal love. So every step, we are, we are heaven on earth. Heaven is only a place in the matrix. The real heaven is the God that you are in that body. And every step we take in these bodies, we're creating paradigms. Literally. We're changing the very fabric in, in, in existence of the frequencies, increasing them, moving them higher and higher, which then moves this planet into a God-planet paradise. You, you can take a starship off the planet and then travel, <coughs> excuse me, far enough out so that when you look at this planet, it looked about the size of a basketball. And you would see that it glowed. Now, you could take a trillion suns, put them in a big ball, and have us, this planet, standing there. And they would pale in comparison to our light. Hands down. So a God planet paradise, it glows. And we're transforming every step of the way. Now picture yourself standing on a golden circle. And you look up and you see three paths. You're standing in the center path, which is the now. You look to your left, there is the path of the past. You look to your right, there's the path of the future. You notice that the trees have formed canopies over these paths, shimmering gold, the leaves, the branches, the bark. And you notice that the path itself is this brilliant emerald green flaming grass, appears to be grass. Now, the one thing that you, don't, that you do notice about these paths is that the one on the left, the past is very worn, and the one on the right, the future is very worn, but the one that you're standing on the now is like brand new. And the reason that is is because most of us allow the ego mind to master us. 
and lead us because it knows it doesn't exist in the now. So it will. That's why the the now and the and the past or the future and the past are so worn because it keeps us either in the future or the past, past the future, future, past, past, future. And we all go into the past. It, we use it, it's kind of like the Great Hall, and it's this massive space. And we use it, we reminisce, we're nostalgic. You know, we, 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 we're, uh, some of us keep things that family members and history, and because it feels good. Others of us uh, will remember times that we've experienced. So we go into this great hall. And we open the door, and we each have one. And we turn on the light, and you, normally you would look in a room. As soon as you go in a room, you're going to look at walls, right, ceiling. Not there, not in the great hall. It is so massive that you can't see the ceiling. Go about, and you pick up some movies and some books and some pictures. You sit in the easy chair, and there's a screen in front of you. And you watch some movies, and you look at some books, and you look at some pictures. Right? You may read the books, or you might just kind of scan them. And you reminisce about things that you've done in this life and how fun they've been and how wonderful. And you'll even visit some of the things that weren't too great. You, you know, you thought you would do it a certain way and it didn't work out. And so you use it as a reference and say, I'm not going to do it that way. I'll do it. I'll try a different way. And we enjoy ourselves. And anything can bring it on. You, you could be just sitting or listening to a song or watching a program, and it just comes on. But then we put everything away. We turn off the light, and we move forward in life. And then we revisit it on occasion. Some of us will stay there so long, and I believe it's unconscious. It's not conscious. But we'll stay there so long that we end up bringing that past into a future that doesn't exist, creating that future from that past and reliving that past and that future. That's why a lot of people say no matter what we do, we always seem to end up here. Now, we all go into the future, right? Because we get in a hurry. We want to know things. We want to know things, so we go into the future. And it really doesn't exist because we're building our futures in the now, and the futures are not etched in stone, they're written in sand. So you can always change your future. So we go there, and we ask questions. We want to know what, when things are going to happen for us, you know, when, when things are going to take place, and what are they going to be about, and what is it going to mean to for us? You know, I, when am I going to have uh, enough well-being or how good health to enjoy my life when am i going to have enough money to enjoy my life when am i going to be able to get that house when am i going to be able to get that car when am i going to be able to do these things and it's a plethora of things it's across the board that we want to know about and so if we don't get answers in that future we'll seek out external authority and, and those are card readers and palm readers and tea leaf readers and uh, you know uh, astrologers, psychics, intuitives, I mean, on and on and on. And so we'll go to them, we'll ask them, this, I want to know this. What do the cards have to say? You know, what, what does my astrological chart have to say? And so we'll do that. And we, there's a few, there's certain responses that you're told this information and um, you look at it and you say, wow, that's really, that's really something. So you believe this is actually going to happen, talking to the external authority. And they go, yeah, it's going to happen. And so you, the person will say, well, that's great. Another person will look at it and go, eh, you know, they don't believe it. And then there's another person that looks at it and believes it wholeheartedly and they believe it, let it go, and, and the majority of the time it will happen in their life. The other ones believe it, but yet 
they're doubt they doubt after after you know three months you know like say a month later they're starting to doubt it and they're starting to question it and of course that sabotages it and it doesn't happen so there's different there's a variety of responses but see the answers are within us and we've been trained forever to seek that which is outside of us there's where all your answers are and that's a bunch of crap you see how it distracts us does done it does a good job of it too and since we don't what since we don't go within we don't go within then what happens is is our our journey continues in the material physical world through the ego mind It's always a choice for each of us. It's a choice. You know, do, do, do we uh, continue with the material physical world? We, we ought to know by now. What the heck are we on it? What would we care to do that for? We've already done it. So the answer is that the choice is that each of us make should be, I'm going to, my journey is within from now on. I'm going to discover the God that I am through the heart mind. Now, there's many of us, the parts of the gods that we are. And we have parts of ourselves, uh, gods that we are that are asleep, stone cold asleep, not going to wake up, They'll determine when they want to wake up. There's parts of ourselves that are awake to a certain extent, parts of the selves of the gods that we are. And we're always one. We're always together. We just don't view it that way. We view the body, and we view separation. And it's interesting how this planet is designed to make you think that it, everything's separate, right? Doesn't it? You look at a tree, it's separate. You look at a dog and a cat separate. You look at all the cows and the horses and everything separate. You look at all of us and each other separate. I mean, it's separate, separate, separate everywhere. It's like it's beat into us. It's because that's the material, physical world, separation. Unity, being one, and that's our natural state of being, are the gods within the body. That's a whole different story, a whole different understanding and comprehension. Now, we, we look at this planet, we're focused on this planet for its liberation. It's complete liberation of pure evil, corrupted souls, lower dark matter, five matter frequencies. And we're in the Googaplexes. I, I mean, the numbers really, truly are endless. One Googaplex will fill this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. These are trillions of Googaplexes from trillions of universes. We're in full compassion, non-judgment, non-ego, non-negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. And all of us are one. And we're all God. And we're all love. And our God force, love, light, energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify, grow, and expand. We immediately form this massive white fire circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Ari, and this now. This emanates from the God force, love, light, energy within each and every one of us, the kingdom of God, the pure, deep, eternal love, the highest of the highest high frequencies. And it's saturating, permeating, flooding this planet. Huge. All life, the highest supreme value in the universe. Is, it, there's no escape. 
and we begin to ascend above the planet. And all the ascension is all of us, ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Christ, El Moria, Mendentia, Pell, Thoth, Yawa, Yeshua, all the off-worlders, galactic, celestials. All of us are ascending. We're all one. How can we not? All of our loved ones who have ascended out uh, of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes we've inhabited, all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, Agartha, and beneath earth. All light energy beings. Everything, even the sleeping ones ascend, they just don't know it. So they, they, they're, they're in that mode, like by camera mode, but they're in that mode believing that they're in 3D. So they are. The rest of our direction is higher frequency which brings us into higher dimensional fields. And that's a choice. It's up to us how high we wish to go. Now, we come into contact with this massive, massive ocean of glitter. Now, it's not like glitter we'd see, ocean of glitter we would depict on this planet. So we kind of, we pulled together a few things that we're familiar with on this planet but we extend them, accentuate them, and intensify them, such as a grand finale fireworks display and a grand finale laser light show display and the ballroom globe. All of them intensified trillions of times. And we combine them in one massive crescendo, and it's like one big burst. And that is nearly describes the ocean of glitter. Now, we look at the reflective points of this ocean of glitter. We discover these little, they're everywhere, and we discover these little tiny microscopic mirrors, perfectly etched, and so we enter them. And we discover that all of us, every single one of us, are teaching and learning, learning and teaching. But see, those of us who continually immerse ourselves in the material physical world, miss it you miss it why do you think it takes lifetimes to discover so there's those of us who acknowledge it and so we watch we look at a tree and the tree well that's separate but we know those of us who are consciously aware to a certain extent we look at the tree and the tree is one the tree is one with you the god that you are the god within that tree So there's a God in it, which is part of you, the God that you are, experience the physical form and the physical life of that tree. Same with a rock. Same with a pond, a creek. Same with a cow, a moose, a horse, a cat, a dog, a bug in the rug, a spider in a web. We learn. And if you and, and I, I'm, a lot of us have said done this. I wonder what it would be like to be that, whatever it is you're looking at. And as kids, we did that all the time. And if you focus on the now through the breath, and you look at whatever it is you're wondering what it would be like to be it, for a brief moment, you would know exactly what it's like to be that. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created, the gods that we are within these bodies, to remind us all that we are the power of healing. We are then met with the purple, violet, blue flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created, the gods that we are within these bodies, to remind us all 
of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that inside and out, head to toe, we are protected with a white fire armor. This white fire armor emanates from the God that we are in these bodies, the highest of the highest high, deep, eternal love light energy. Now, nothing can penetrate it. No demon possession, no lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, no corrupted souls, no pure evil. Because as we hold that vibrational frequency, pure deep eternal love, they can't come near us because they'll vaporize. So they stay away. So we're protected at all times. And, and, and that is literally embraced through the heart mind, not the ego mind. So there's no doubt. There's total faith and trust. Yet, only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency, whether consciously or unconsciously, low enough through hatred, anger, fear, greed, envy, hurried, revenge, you will lower your frequency low enough to create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. Now, if you do decide to do this, you know, then you open up possibilities of demon possession attachments and many other things. But you're also immediately met with a double column of light. We created this double column of light. The first part of it is purple transmuted flame. This reminds all of us that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutral light substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are. No more. We're then met with the second part of this column of light, this double column of light, the violet ray. We created this part of the column of light to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is a column of light that we created the gods that we are within these bodies to remind us all that we are the sun, the sunlight, the rain, the rainbows, sunsets and sunrises, clouds in the skies, oceans, rivers, lakes, and streams, trees, forests, soil, earth, animals, we're everything. Everything is us. So the next time you look at a sunset or sunrise, rainbow, then we're trained to think, well, let's separate here, remember, material, physical world. Because that's, that's beautiful, isn't it? And it is beautiful because it's you, the God that you are in that body. So the next time you do see any of that starry lit night sky, rainbow, sunset, sunrise, Clouds in the sky. That is the God that I am. Always through the heart mind, not through the ego mind, not through the head. That is the God that I am. And you'll notice a shift, and that shift will continue as long as you understand, at least in the beginning, of who and what you are. Now, we continue to ascend above the planet as we do some of us step outside of our physical forms, if we're carrying physical form, and hover effortlessly above them. And the reason we do this is because we can, and it's fun. We come into full contact with this massive crystal and light tower. We created this tower. It's larger than the solar system and beyond. That's pretty darn big. In the center column, we discover this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere, this 
beautiful, wonderful golden white bowl of light. In turn, it is literally surrounded by multicolored rings of light that seem to go to infinity and beyond. This in turn creates a massive, misty, cloudy, super bright white, reflecting and flashing cloud. And it's absorbed right through our heart, right through the heart mind. And it feels like a warm embrace that never ends. We discover that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Then comes gratitude, well-being, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, massive prosperity, and massive abundance. And then we begin to understand that all of that is a reflection of the gods that we are within these bodies. Now, at the top of this column, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, infinity and beyond, as it's doing right now. What is it? What's the golden ocean? Pure, deep, eternal love. Flooding, saturating, and permeating this planet. On it, in it, above it, and below. And we're drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this golden ocean. Golden ocean is the drops, drops of the golden ocean. The only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. Meditative sphere. We created this meditative sphere over four years ago. It holds almost 1,900 of our meditations in perpetual motion, which means they continue to intensify, grow, and expand. And they're flooding this planet. They're saturating it every day, seven days a week, nonstop, for over four years. Hundreds of millions of us on and off world, focused on this planet's liberation through pure, deep, eternal love, through the heart mind, and discovery at our choosing that we are God, that we always have been God within these bodies. Now you can picture, you can tap into this anytime you wish. You just picture yourself to your heart mind's motion picture. And you see what's happening on this planet. It is a difficult view in meditation. You see all of this goop and this black matter. It's the blackest black black you've ever seen. And it's literally it's ascending off the planet. It's literally floating up. And everywhere you look, the AI goop, all of it. And it's caught in this field, so to speak, but you can see through. But you see these shimmering waves of gold and white and pink light. And you watch as it disintegrates, as all of these pieces of goop are literally moving up, floating up, and they hit this field, and you watch as they just start disintegrating. And then they make it to the, to the sky, and the sky you look up and you see it's all this brilliant white, golden, pink light. The remnants of whatever is left going through the field hits that, and it looks like a bunch of flash bulbs going off. They just vaporize all over the place. And you can see this. There's so many, it looks like, a, like glitter flashing everywhere. And you can feel it in the heart mind and the exuberation, and the bliss, and the peace, and the joy, and the love. Because that energy can no longer exist 
with an increased vibrational frequency of pure, deep, eternal love. The basic struggle of our lives and their essential nature is divine. Respect the struggle and it will relax. Then you will see the real beauty of your being. Notice today what it is that you are continuously struggling against. Take maybe three minutes. Let go of any agenda you have that is causing any sort of internal battle. No matter how important it seems, explore what it feels like for a few moments to be free from it. Releasing is an absolutely effortless process. There is no efforting to letting go. Just set the intention to release the struggle and let the universe handle the details. I'll join you in meditation, and I'll return to close this out.
take an easy, slow breath in through the nose. And an easy, slow breath out of the mouth. Be still. Have you ever noticed how your mind is a relentless thinking, striving, and demanding machine? It is always busy, always attempting to create a new you. Excuse me. The ironic thing is that with all this busyness, there's never enough time to stop and experience the real infinite you. So randomly today, be aware of the entertaining thoughts your mind focuses upon. Whatever your stories are about, your past and future, do not buy into them. For today, see how long you can actually remain in the present moment of now and let your mind totally relax. What will it take until all of your internal dialogue stops and the suffering is released? Your body-mind will naturally find this peaceful relaxation when you are giving 100% of yourself to this experience of life right here, right now. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. And we will return here Sunday, May 22nd, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call.